constitutes less than 2% of our body weight. But here's the thing. It uses 20% of our blood supply, 20% of our energy, and it generates around 20% of our heat. Now, what that means in practical terms is that one-fifth of all the nutrients you took in at breakfast today go to your brain to supply it with essential raw materials. One-fifth of any junk you eat, which obviously being fearlessly creative women, you wouldn't. <laughs> but the rest of the world out there, one-fifth of all the junk they eat goes to their brain to jam its mental machinery, to actually slow down our cognitive processes. And one-fifth of all the calories we consume go to our brain to keep our cognitive wheels turning. Because in fact, thinking, planning, decision-making are high-energy work and use up quite a lot of calories. Now, to kick things off, turn to the person sitting next to you and give them your best smile. <laughs> Lovely. Having a... established immediate rapport, please give each other a genuine, heartfelt compliment. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, the person next to me doesn't know me, don't you worry. Something pleasant and positive about you has struck them, or they wouldn't be sitting next to you. You've got 10 seconds each. Go for it. What was that all about? Well, the second thing to note about the brain is that it loves suspense. Suspense has the effect of giving our brain cells a shake and saying, wake up, something really exciting is about to happen. So I'm not going to tell you why we did that until much later. In order to keep your brain cells in suspense and on alert for the answer and therefore totally switched on and paying full attention to everything I'm saying, which of course you would anyway, because I have seriously the most amazing news. In the last 10 years, neuroscientists have uncovered more about the human brain than in all the millennia of brain research that's gone on in human history, which means our knowledge of the brain has absolutely exploded and the information is life-changing. In fact, you are about to learn. Who would have thought on this seemingly ordinary Wednesday morning, you would learn the most profound, pivotal, exciting, significant, crucial, critical, colossal, consequential, monumental, momentous, mind-blowing, awe-inspiring, enabling, empowering and far-reaching scientific discovery in the history of the human race. And that's no exaggeration. <laughs> because that discovery is that the brain, your brain, my brain, our brain, that 1.4 kilogram wrinkled lump of grey matter can actually change its very own structure with each different activity it performs. Something like this Rubik's Cube. Now it's worth just stopping and thinking about that for a moment. The brain can change itself. What does that actually mean? It means the brain can grow new cells. It can make new connections between existing cells. It can establish whole new circuits. It can even change which cells perform which functions. And this is all more good news because all those things we can do something about. It doesn't just do that randomly. It does that in response to what we do, in response to what we think or not think even, and in response to how we behave. And we call this remarkable ability for the brain to change itself, as Susie said, neuroplasticity. Hands up, how many of you have heard of that term before today? Wow, that's terrific. Well, I'll explain it very briefly to make sure we're all on the same page. Neuroplasticity comes from two words, neuron, meaning brain cell, and plastic, meaning malleable or able to be moulded. So what neuroplasticity means is that every single one of us can and does influence how our own brain operates.